Good morning, everybody. Welcome into First Take Big Day here today. Skip Bayless, Stephen A. is in NYC. Everybody's got their game face on, ready to go. I'm Molly Karam. Good morning, guys. Good morning. How y'all doing? How y'all doing? Oh, I'm good, Stephen I'm A. I'm great. I'm great. I'm ready to go. Let's do it. All right, let's, let's work. So those Thunder will try and close out the Spurs and advance tonight to the team's fourth Western Conference final in the last six years. If the Spurs lose tonight, their 67 regular season wins would be tied for the most all time by a team that didn't make it to at least the conference finals. All right, Stephen A, you know the question. Who wins tonight? I'm going to go with the Oklahoma City Thunder. I know I picked the Spurs to win this Game 7, and I think if it goes to a Game 7, they'll do it. But I find it very, very hard to believe that they're going to win tonight's game. And it's not just because of their record when faced again an elimination. Speaking about Greg Popovich, who's won two um, and lost ten, and uh, you know, and, and when, you know, being on the brink of elimination. But it's really about Lamarcus Aldridge. I have to see it to believe it. I know what a big time talent he is, uh, but this is a pressurized situation. And as you alluded to yesterday, Skip, when you talked about him, you said he's a spur now, not a Portland Trailblazer, and you know he can't act like it, like. He he did when he was with Portland not to say that he was bad there we know that he's a star in this league he's big time but this is some big time pressure right here uh, because of the expectations based on the kind of season that they had if you're the San Antonio Spurs you've been universally recognized as the second best team in basketball behind the Golden State Warriors well one would surmise that you have no excuse to lose to anybody but the Golden State Warriors based on what we saw from Oklahoma City this year now clearly that's not the case because you look at Russell Westbrook and the way that he stepped up in game five you look at the combination of him and Kevin Durant you know what they can do offensively but but I think one of the things that has gone widely unnoticed is the production from Oklahoma City's bench. Whether it's a Deion Waiters and Enos Cantor and those guys, they're coming off the bench and they're making huge contributions. They outscored the Spurs, I think it was like 20 to 11 in game five in terms of bench production. What are we hearing or what are we getting from San Antonio's bench? Not much thus far. And so when I look at it from that perspective, it comes down again to Kawhi Leonard being more aggressive, which I can predict, but LaMarcus Aldridge being more efficient, which I can't predict. I simply don't know what he's going to do. I get a sense I know what Kevin Durant is going to do, what Russell Westbrook is going to do, and what other guys with that home crowd spurring them on is going to do. And I look at it from that perspective, and I'm thinking about the fact that OKC has grabbed about 47% of the shots that they have missed, meaning their offensive rebounds. They've been dominant, particularly in the last game or two. And so when you have that kind of advantage, if you're the San Antonio Spurs, as you pointed to yesterday, Skip, the San Antonio Spurs have got to step up and find a way to neutralize OKC. You can't beat an offensive juggernaut like OKC if you're giving them second and third chances on offense because they're dominating the boards with offensive rebounds. They had 15 the last game. That's not going to work. But the question is, with a debilitating Tim Duncan disintegrating before our very eyes with those knees and age and attrition having kicked in emphatically, who can we rely upon to really step in and get it done? I would say a David West. That would help on the boards, no doubt. Um, you, the, your guy Boban, who I'm not sure about, but he is 7'3 and younger, so I got to give him some love. But until I see it, I can't predict that San Antonio is going to go into OKC for a second time in the same series and knock them off. Had they not won game three, then that would be different. I could tell you that San Antonio would probably win the night. But the fact that they already beat OKC in game three in OKC, I can't see OKC dropping the ball twice in the same series on their home court. I'm going with the Thunder to win the night and close out the Spurs in advance to the Western Conference Finals. So just to reiterate what you stated as you opened your soliloquy, you did pick the Spurs in seven games, correct? Yes, I did. Yes, so I did. you have now officially flipped on your own pick, right? So so now yes, you're going I did, thunder I did. and six. I flipped, yes, I flipped I, yesterday. I know. I just want to get this on record. Yes, I want to make sure yeah, we get yeah. it on camera just without well, any well, 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 equivocation well, last time I here. Checked, okay. last, last time I checked, we are on national okay, TV, right. and I said it yesterday, so it's been <laughs> on the record. But go ahead. Go ahead. As much as I love you like a brother, I have to call you on this because this was sure. the ultimate classic Stephen A. Smith Memorial 
on the fence, cover your you-know-what pick because you mm -hmm. picked my Spurs in, in part to jinx my Spurs, but, but it's deeper than that. It's more yeah. clandestine than that. There, there's more method mm -hmm. to the madness because what mm -hmm. you've done classically is you, you, you've kept one foot on each side of the fence where if my Spurs, who have burned you many, many times on this show with your picks, especially in the postseason, mm. if they burned mm -hmm. you again, you could just say, I told you they were going to win. And if Oklahoma City wins, as you firmly believe that they will, you, you, there's almost joy creeping into your voice now, you'll get what you want. You, you will get my old, boring, unathletic Spurs out of your hair, out of your sight, out of your way, out of your life, for the rest of the playoffs, you'll get what you wanted from the start, which is Westbrook and Durant against Steph and Clay and company in the conference finals, that... right? Okay, I get it. The box office for that is much higher than it would be for my old, oh, boring, slow, unathletic Spurs against Steph and company. I, I get all that. But I've told you from the start, I believe in the character of my Spurs this year and I'm going to trust that character once again tonight. And I'm sticking with my Spurs and seven pick in, in reverse psychology from what you just stated. They did win game three last Friday night in Oklahoma City, and they did so impressively and to me convincingly. So I know they are capable of it. And as I detailed to you yesterday, they have been in position to win all five games, all five of them, and they've managed to win only two. Is that a bad sign? Glass half full, glass half, or glass empty. I, again, I'm going to take it as glass half full because I know they can beat this team at its own game. But now I'm getting back to what I brought up to you in passing yesterday. My man Danny Green, who hit six out of nine threes the other night, in a losing effort, I might add, said after the game, maybe it's time for us to play angry. That's exactly what has to happen tonight. For once, my Spurs cannot say, let's just go out there and outthink and outfinesse them. That will not work against this group led by the angriest player I have ever watched on a nightly basis. Would you agree with this? Russell Westbrook plays angry every night, every dribble of every possession. I mean, I've never seen, he is a force of nature, sometimes unbridled, sometimes a little out of control. He had eight turnovers the other night, but does anybody play with more intensity and ferocity on a dribble by dribble basis than this man does? I've, I've never seen anything like it. So you have to fight that fire with your own fire. And I've seen this team, my team, the Spurs, play with some aggression, some physicality. To start game five at home, you know this and I know this. My Spurs came out lifeless, listless, flat, deadheaded. I was thinking, this is game five, where are you? And to your point and mine yesterday, LaMarcus Aldridge just didn't show up. I don't know if the stage was too big. I, I don't know what happened. And I don't care because the rest of the team is good enough, even without him, to play physical basketball and match the Thunder, especially on the backboards. They got punked in their own gym the other night. You know it and I know it. They got annihilated on the backboards. 15 offensive rebounds, <clears throat> four went to Russell Westbrook. You tell me, Stephen A. Smith, you are the guru of ESPN basketball. Have you ever seen anything like this kid or this young man on the backboards? He just attacks the glass every possession. Shots go up, and Danny Green and Kawhi are just looking around, and Westbrook flies in and snatches another second-chance offensive rebound. You can't win like that, so you have to fight back. You have to be physical. You have to play, dare I say, as you bring up, Boban for 10 or 12 or 15 minutes. You have to coach with some desperation, Coach Popovich. Stephen A., remember the last classic game six that my Spurs won at Thunder? Remember that one in 2014 that got them to the NBA Finals that they won against LeBron? Yeah. That was the night. Pop shocked me. Who did he start that night? Remember this? Matt Bonner. I'm not saying you got to yeah. start Matt Bonner tonight, but he just did. I don't know what it was, but he started Matt Bonner. Tony Parker was gimpy with a hamstring, couldn't even go in the second half, 
and it was Corey Joseph and Patty Mills against Russell Westbrook. You kidding me? And they won in overtime. They are capable of winning in overtime if they come out and start shooting the ball like they mean it. You seen teams shoot it like you mean it, you know, again, make or miss league, hot or cold. Sometimes you just come out and you will the ball in the basket. My team is capable of doing that in a do or die game. And I want to see it tonight. And I believe I will see it tonight where they just shoot every shot like it's going to go in. And again, I told you yesterday, sometimes Duran and Westbrook are just so good. They're too good for my Spurs. Maybe that'll happen tonight, but I don't think so. I'm going to trust that my team comes out and matches intensity and will and skill with the Thunder early on. And I'm going to go with the score in the ballpark of what it was last Friday night. That was 100 to 96. I'm going to go 98 to 94 Spurs over Thunder. Spurs home on Sunday night at 8 p.m. Eastern, game seven. And then we'll have a well, different conversation. Well, well, listen, we'll have a different conversation, but I, I'm not hedging my bets because Skip Bayless, you know, unlike you, I, 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 don't, I, don't, I don't care if I'm wrong. If it happens, it happens. I mean, I'll tell you what I feel at the time that I'm asked oh. a question, and if it is, it is. You know, yeah, I don't wear it on my sleeve the way that you do, particularly when it comes to the San Antonio Spurs. I can't hate on you too much for that because when it comes to my Knicks, I'm totally emotional. I'll be the first to admit it. My objectivity goes out the window because I just get disgusted even thinking about them. But with the San Antonio Spurs, I understand how you can be. I mean, it is what it is. Do I want to see Westbrook against Steph yes, Curry? Yes, you do. Yes, I do. I'm not apologizing for it. I went all the way to I went all the way to Oakland to see that, even though I was already out there because on the eve of the Super Bowl. But I couldn't wait to see that game. It was everything I waited for, and that's that's what it that's what it comes down to. But I really, really feel like, hey, listen, you can make the predictions based on what you're seeing and what teams are supposed to do. For example, I have. No no issues whatsoever. You keep bringing up Popovich and some changes that tweaks that may need to be made. Okay, that's fine. Maybe Tim Duncan doesn't need to play 28 minutes. You got me there. You could give some, some minutes to Boban. You could give some minutes to David West. David West was brought here for moments like this. He has shown. He David West has been in conference semifinals before. He may not have been to the finals, but David West has been to the conference yep. finals. He's been to the conference semifinals, obviously. So these moments are not too big for him. I think David West should be put up in there. And the boy is strong, and he can bang, and nobody's going to push him around. He's not the most athletic dude in the no. world, but he's got a nice J, and he will bang down low. And you need that if you are the San Antonio Spurs on a night like this. They have the capability to beat Oklahoma City. We know this. The problem is, is that Skip... You did all of this in the offseason. You re-signed Kawhi Leonard. You went out there and got LaMarcus Aldridge. They're the cornerstones of your franchise, and at least from an offensive perspective, I understand you don't see but so much of a similarity between LaMarcus Aldridge and Tim Duncan in his heyday. Yep. But I'm here to tell you, tell me somebody whose offensive skill set is closer to Tim Duncan in terms of his ability to face the basket yeah. or play with his back to the basket and shoot the way that he shoots from mid-range. Think about that. LaMarcus Aldridge is almost a clone of Tim Duncan to that degree. And I look at it from that perspective. If you are going to win, LaMarcus Aldridge has to come through for you. You can't win, particularly a game of this man, unless Danny Green and Patty Mills joins him and they go berserk from three-point range. I can't see how you can beat Oklahoma City if you are San Antonio okay. without LaMarcus Aldridge stepping up and reminding you of the greatness that we all know he has. Just a quick point of order. To me, LaMarcus is a much better mid-range jump shooter than Tim Duncan ever was. He, Tim was a great okay. bank shooter from... 12 feet well, maybe, but but LaMarcus can go around the, the array, man. He can right, shoot him from everywhere, I'm, straight I'm, on. I'm just, I'm just yep. making the point that if you wanted a successor yeah. to a Tim Duncan. I agree. In terms of your system and yeah. what you're looking for from that four you spot, right. you can't get much better than LaMarcus Aldridge. You cannot. You can't. Nope, but the ball so, but he's got, to but he's go got to show the up. basket. That's he's it. Got, exactly. Yeah. It's got to go in the basket. And yep. so this is the thing. Popovich and the plays that they were calling. Skip, we saw LaMarcus Aldridge getting open shots. We saw him being fed. Don't he had me. open shots, and he was missing. That's not coaching. That comes down to LaMarcus Aldridge 
being that dude. Tim Duncan was that dude from the time he walked into this league. Yep. He was that dude. LaMarcus was, Aldridge has to be right. that for the rest of this series. He has to. And just for the record, I'm watching tonight's game on a different TV, just for the record. You are not. Well, I am. You are I unbelievable am. to not jinx Absolutely. it. I'm going to change my luck. It's a beautiful mind, Stephen A. Changing my luck beautiful tonight. Beautiful mind. Listen, a different listen, TV. Listen. Oh, this guy is a different hey, listen, deal, I'm, America. Listen, hey. we can't lose either way. Hey. Either either Russell Westbrook and Kevin Durant are going up against Steph Curry and the crew, or we're going to have a game seven in San Antonio. Yeah. I, I'm you fine can't with lose either scenario. way. You can lose badly. Right. Yeah, hope yeah, you don't you, get you hope don't you don't get it. punked tonight, Skip. Yeah, right. Thunder okay. strike. Listen, again. I, listen. When it, I've, I'm, I'm a Knicks fan, I've lost every day of the yeah. NBA season. Yeah. I never win. If I'm, you know, <laughs> I'm a Knicks fan. What do, you, what, do you mean, what do you want me to do? You're always winning, Stephen A. Yeah. All right, game six tonight. Coverage begins with NBA countdown. That's 7:30 Eastern on ESPN.